Hi everybody, it's Sarah Cray with Let's Make Art and I teach watercolor and we do a new tutorial every single week. And this week we are doing seashells. Ah, colorful, bright. These are loose, not super detailed or realistic. We're playing with fun colors and we're going over a bunch of different uh, watercolor techniques. So the colors we are using are pink and Orchid and Azure Blue. The paintbrush we are paintbrushes we are using are around six and around two. These are the Princeton Heritage series. Um, I really like these. They're some of my favorite brushes, but there are a ton of different paintbrushes out there. Um, so just use what you have. Or if you get really frustrated with your brushes, maybe try these and see if you like them. I like those brushes. Yeah? Yes, I've used them several times. Oh, good. <laughs> Maybe five or six. <laughs> a couple of several times. A couple of several. Um, okay. Steps. Step one, we're just going to lightly sketch out the composition of our seashells. Um, and these are basic shapes. So even if you're not familiar with drawing, that's okay. These don't need to be super detailed. They're just rough shapes. Step number two, we are going to um, do seashell number one. Step number three, we're gonna do seashell number two. Step number four, we're gonna do seashell number three. <laughs> I'm seeing a pattern. <laughs> and then the very last step is just putting in these dots. And of course, I just wanna give you guys permission to do whatever you want. Maybe you wanna do way more seashells. Maybe you don't like the dots. Maybe you wanna do like seaweed in between or coral or whatever. You have absolutely every right to do that. And the warm-ups we are going to go through, oh, we should start our oath. And I would like to say that you can skip the warm-ups, you can skip the oath, you can go right into the tutorial. SJ, who is a wonderful worker of ours, um, puts a timestamp of where to get, where you can just fast forward right to where you get into the good stuff. So feel free to use that button. You just click it. it moves you. <laughs> is that your click? <laughs> is that a click or a spray? <laughs> <laughs> like a mm, that's not better oh that's good yes got it got it got Nailed it, it. okay let's do our oath so if you can raise your right hand and repeat after me i promise to be kind to myself i promise to be kind to myself i promise not to compare my work i promise not to compare my work and i promise to have fun and i promise to have fun <laughs> he did it <laughs> in the back um I like to start off that way because um, sometimes we forget that art is not about being the best and art is not about um, who, who are you better than and um, it, it's not competition. It's all about joy and enjoying yourself and learning something and trying something new and it's vulnerable and it's scary. But as long as we remind ourselves that that's the point, it's a little bit easier to do. Yeah. So that is why I do that. Okay. So the fun thing about this project is we're actually going to focus on three different watercolor techniques on each of these seashells. So the first thing we are going to work on um, is we're going to do wet on dry. This one is wet on wet and this one is blending. So we have three different um, warm ups to to focus on. So when you do wet on dry, what that means is you're going to layer a wash down. So I'm just gonna grab some pink. Now, when you dip your paintbrush in your jar, you wanna make sure that you're actually hitting the bristles off the side of the cup before you put your paintbrush in the paint. Because if you don't do that, then it'll be dripping and it's too much water. So you want to make sure that you don't have too much water on your brush. I'm picking up some paint. And so here is a wash, okay? Now for it to be considered wet on dry, this needs to dry completely and then I will do um, another paint layer on top of that. So we're gonna move, we're gonna leave that alone for a second. We're gonna move on to the wet on wet technique. Will you be using the same color or a different color when you do the dry? You do both. Okay. I'll use a slightly different color. Okay. Okay. Okay, so we're gonna let that dry for a second. Now wet on wet, 
is when the surface is wet already with a wash or just water and then you drop in another wet thing, either water or paint. <laughs> I do milk liquid. Uh, I don't know how that would go. I'll try it. I'll let you know what happens. <laughs> let me know how that goes. Um, so if I were to do uh, a wet on wet, like let's say I grab some orchid and I paint it there and I can do water drops in there. Okay. So this is wet on wet. You could do the opposite where you do water first and then drop in color. You can also drop in water on top of that. But basically you're dropping in a wet air, a wet thing. <laughs> I don't know what the word I'm looking for is like a wet milk. No. <laughs> Kana, do you need some milk? Are you thirsty? <laughs> okay now um, you, sometimes you might ask, how do I know when to use which ones, which is such a valid question. So when you're doing wet on dry, um, this is a more controlled way of doing layers. So um, if you want to be really precise with your work, if you don't like a lot of bleeds, if you don't like a lot of blooms, if you don't like a lot of unexpected textures, then wet on dry is the way to go. I love unexpected textures. I love being able to play with the funkiness of watercolor and really celebrating that it does like some weird stuff. So I use wet on wet techniques a lot. Um, but that's, that's a, a difference between them is you can see, well, I haven't finished that one yet, so that's not as helpful, but, <laughs> but like already this one is way funkier in texture, um, in lines, all of that. But for, I enjoy that personally. That's my own personal aesthetic. Um, because I think it adds visual interest, but because you guys are the artists, you can totally choose which one you prefer and there is not a wrong answer. So don't say, well, which one is right? It's whatever one you want to do. It's your life. You know what I mean? Yeah, that one's right. <laughs> yeah. Whatever one you choose. Yeah. You want to put milk in it's your paint? Right. Go ahead. Put milk. I actually heard that, uh, putting alcohol in, uh, I don't know if it's rubbing alcohol or like drinking oh, alcohol. Yeah, sure, sure. Not sure. Um, but you can also get some really interesting textures. That sounds fun, actually. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? Maybe we need a party one day. We should probably day. try a cleaning party. Let's wait till this baby. <laughs> let's wait till this baby gets out of me. I'll bring in some then shot glasses. Will get real artsy. <laughs> <laughs> That's when we're gonna do a live, and it's gonna be a great. Time. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> Okay, the last technique that we're gonna go over is blending. And that's what we did in this third seashell here. Can they see that? Do I have to bring the thing over? It's good. Okay, so what I do for that is I will put the dark areas first. So let's say I'm doing like the crevices on this seashell. Okay. And then I wait for it to dry for a second, and then I'll just rinse my brush and blend out. Now, if you do it too quickly, like, let me, sh let me show you. If I were to do it right away, let's say I paint a dark section and blend that out right away, it's more likely it's gonna even out to where you lose your lines, which is not bad, and I use that technique a lot. But if you wanna save, savor some definition, then you let it dry for a second and then you blend. You see how those lines are a little bit stronger? Yes. So there's different ways that you can blend. So if you want it to be a smooth transition where it kind of flows and evens out, you're gonna to wanna to do it right away. If you wanna keep some line definition, then you wanna let those lines dry and then use just water to blend out. Now let me finish up this um, dry, wet on dry. So now my first wash is totally dry. And if you want, this is using the same color. You can do, you can paint right on top of that. Or as you can see here in this seashell, I mixed a little bit of the pink with the orchid to get a darker pink. And then use that. So you can see here that those lines 
stayed sharp. When you do it on a wet surface, they blend out like our wet on wet, and then here's our blending. Now I do wanna say with blending, there are different variables in there, and there's nothing wrong with after you blend it out. If you need to go back and kind of like redefine some of those lines, that's okay too. I'm not saying you have to do that every time, but sometimes, and I don't want you to feel like you're not allowed to do that or whatever, because you are. Okay, I think that's all we really need to go over. Um, yeah, I think we're good. Okay. Let's get started. So our very first step is we're just going to softly sketch the placement and size of our seashells. Again, you guys can go rogue and do whatever you want, but. You drive a rogue. I do drive a rogue. How fun. It is fun. Go rogue. <laughs> okay, uh, for sketching for watercolor, watercolor is transparent. So whenever you're doing sketches, you either want to make sure that you're doing really light sketches so then the dark pencil line doesn't show through the paint or you could use a watercolor pencil to do your sketches because those lines will disappear once water hits it. I'm going to use a regular pencil because I don't have any watercolor pencils right next to me but maybe one day I will and I will show you. <laughs> we might work on that. <laughs> Listen I'll get better at my job. <laughs> It'll be okay. So for this swirly seashell, now I just want to say that these seashells are more loose, they're not super detailed, um, but hopefully they're giving you enough information that you understand that they're seashells, right? Which is, which is sometimes just the job that we need to do. Now this is one of those swirly seashells and a little trick when you're drawing something and you want it to be a little bit more illustrative is like here where these crevices are, if I were to be doing a really realistic painting, these would actually be a really dark value that then transfer to a lighter one. But since I'm doing this loose, I'm switching it and just leaving a thin white line in between to communicate the sections. But that's not really how they are because it's not like they're invisible white lines or... Cracked. Yeah. But right it's shine. enough to communicate, yeah. you know? Yeah. So I'm just saying that's a little trick. So if you're trying to make something and you're trying to do it loose and quick and you don't want to like have to define all of the edges with darker values, sometimes just sectioning it off works too. So, um, okay, I'm going to put that one here. I'm going to have it be probably two to three inches. I'm going to have it slightly curved inside. Um, so I'm just going to start with my first one. And you want to slightly curve the edges too. You don't want them to be totally straight because it's round. We're trying to communicate that it's a three-dimensional object. Why are you laughing? I just wanted to bring this up. I didn't want to, but I have to. I wouldn't suggest doing this seashell in the color of brown. <laughs> in case it <laughs> ends up being a little stumpier than... <laughs> I can't not picture it now. It's fine. We're 30 year olds here. <laughs> I'm a child. <laughs> Do you know what? Art brings out the child in all of yeah, us. Yeah, I'm just trying to be creative. <laughs> That's all. Uh, but I think naturally these are brown with spots. Awkward. But really interesting yeah. to know. <laughs> okay. Valid point, Keenan. If you're going to do this seashell, maybe not make it squatty. Yeah. We're moving on now. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna round the edges. Okay, so there's my, my top one, okay? And then the next section, it's gonna be a little bit more in. Okay, next section, bring it in a little bit. Okay, I think that's good. And if you want to like, cause some of those seashell tops actually kind of swirl up. If you want to give this one a little bit of extra height on the top, you can. If you're be really fancy, you can like bring it around like that, but we're not doing that, okay? Okay, so there's my seashell, number one. Number two, I'm gonna do my starfish Stars are actually super hard to freehand to get accurately, okay? So I just want to say that actual starfish are a little bit wonky shaped and they're not perfectly 
um, geometric and straight. So it's okay if your starfish is a little bit wonky. Um, so if you have a hard time sketching a star, you can do it like, you know, kids, you know, like when you sketch stars, if that's helpful for you to get the basic shape down. Okay, and now that I put that star in, I, you, you wanna pay attention to how these she seashells are next to each other on the page. This is probably a little bit close from here to here, so I can just move it over a little bit. Okay, not a big deal. And this is why sketching is sometimes good. <laughs> Sorry, this is a wonky star, but that's okay. Remember, this is rough rough sketches, just enough information for placement. Okay, and then my third one, I'm gonna do this one in a couple of steps. So I'm gonna have it turned this way. So the point of it is gonna be about here. And then I'm gonna do like a fan, okay? And then these are just curved at the top, scalloped, like so. And then they have little tails. And then we can um, finesse this a little bit because that's a little bit rough. So I'm just going to, um, how can I do this in a way that makes sense? Okay, so I'll just, I'm just gonna work through my thinking process so you guys can hear what I'm thinking. I think what's throwing me off is the angle from this is different from the angle on this side, which is making this feel really uneven. So I'm gonna work on trying to make this angle even. So I think I need to actually widen this a little bit more or bring this one in. And it's okay to erase. Let's try bringing that in a little bit more. Widening that. And then these scalloped edges should all kind of point um, like towards the center of the seashell. Yeah, so they can see it. So you see how like if this is the middle of my seashell, all of these lines are pointing towards the middle of my seashell. Does that make sense? Yeah. So if I were to have a line kind of here in the middle, then I'm just gonna make sure that my angles and lines point inward. And you can kind of play with the, play with adding more layers, like how wide do you want your seashell to be? Okay, now, and I know that this is a lot, so I'm sorry if this is overwhelming. Now that I added that extra width on the side, now it feels really squatty. So then I'm just like, okay, well, what if I make it a little bit longer? Okay, that feels better. And there's my curved. That feels, that feels better. It's not as curved in as my reference photo, but that's okay. Okay. And then I'm just gonna like, because there's a lot of sketch marks on that, I'm just gonna lightly erase it so it doesn't take over, the sketch marks don't take over my painting. Okay. Okay, now we're gonna move on to actually painting, which is the fun part. And I don't want you guys to get stuck on the sketching part, especially if you're not comfortable with drawing. So like if you've been working on the sketch part for like 20 minutes and you're starting to get like irritated, put the pencil down and just start painting. Okay, so just like, sometimes the sketch isn't perfect and that's okay, but don't get stuck on that spot so much that it stops you from actually making the painting. Okay, so now I'm gonna, the first seashell is gonna be wet on dry. Dry on what? What is it? <laughs> wet on dry. <laughs> Sorry. Listen, I'm eight months pregnant. That shocked me. I didn't even know how to respond. I didn't even talk about my hat. Somebody made me this hat. Oh, it's such a nice hat. They sent it to me for Christmas. I forgot her name. I have it by my desk. It's got a real Where's Waldo. But she feel was like, 
I noticed you wear beanies in your tutorial, so I made you a beanie. And I'm like, that's so nice. So nice. So thank you. Okay, focus. So I'm just I'm just filling in the shapes that I made with just kind of a medium wash. Now this pink color is super light value naturally, okay? So even if you have a lot of paint on your brush, you're not gonna get a super dark color because this is just a naturally light value color on its own. Another color that is similar to that is yellow. Which pink is this? This is just pink. Just pink. It's okay. just called pink. I wasn't sure. Yeah. Thank you for You're your welcome. service. Thank you for your service. Okay, next section. So I'm just working my way down. Okay. And that's it. I'm just going to leave that. And then when it's dry, I'll come back in and do the texture lines on the left-hand side. Now we are going to move on with our starfish. So for the wet on dry on this one, I'm going to go off my outline and using just water, I'm going to do my, because starfish kind of like raise up in the middle. And so that's what I'm going to paint first. So I'm just going to do thin little arms on my starfish nice and wet and then I'm going to switch to my two and I'm going to mix a little bit of my azure and my orchid together to get this like purpley violet color and then I'm going to drop in dots along each arm and they're going to bleed and spread but I think that's cool so we like that this is cool this is what the cool kids are doing you know if putting spreadable dots on starfish is cool, you can call me Miles Davis. <laughs> I don't even know how to respond to that. Yes, yes. Okay, the, just the thing to be aware of if you're doing this technique, if you wait too long to put your dots in, your paint will be dry. I mean, it won't bleed. See, it's dry right there, those aren't bleeding. But never fear, my friends, because all you got to do is re-wet the area. And then it's like problem solved. Problem solution. You know what I mean? I just, I just love when paint gets messed with by water. I know. It's so beautiful. Like, look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. We should have a super close-up time lapse just for people to watch all the time. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I have like the base of my starfish and then now I'm going to kind of blend out a little bit using more just of the pure orchid by itself. Can they see my palette that I'm mixing? Yes. Okay. And now I'm just going to kind of like thicken these up because this is looking really skinny, right? So I'm like, let's give this a little bit more body. So I'm going to do kind of the edges. And if you've got to like extend the arms out a little bit, you can. Have you ever held a starfish? I have actually. I've only held one once when I was a kid and it was surprisingly hard. Yeah, it's really hard. Yeah, if I, yeah, if I, yeah. I'm mm. remembering correctly. My uh, parents used to live in the Virgin Islands, and so when I would visit them during the summer, we would go snorkeling, and that is where I touched and held my first starfish. Wow, that's fun. Okay. Okay, so now my starfish is looking a little bit meatier. Meatier. <laughs> I don't know why I thought that was funny. Okay. Um, but we kind of lost some of our dots a little bit from blending out. Well, let's put some, let's put some back in there. Do, do, do. And maybe you don't have to do this part because your dots stayed. It's up to you. I held my first starfish 
at, in Kingston, Washington, on a dock in the Puget Sound. In the what? Puget Sound. It's a what? body of water. I don't oh. understand anything about it. I know it's connected to the ocean. Okay. Cool. It's pretty neat. Very cold. And then the last thing I'm going to do on the starfish to just give it a little extra depth is kind of on these curves where the sections meet. I'm just going to do another layer of value because I want to like show that this part is raised up and this part is farther away from us. Does that make sense? Yes. So I'm just going to add a little bit extra shadow on here to give it a little bit more dimension. Okay. And because we're doing wet on wet on this technique, this is going to look funky. Everyone's is going to look different. Because I put in my dots in again on this side, they kind of spread a lot and didn't say as tight as my example. That is not a huge deal. I'm okay with that. Um, it doesn't bother me. And so just kind of embrace whatever your paint does and celebrate it. Okay. Now we're gonna go into our last seashell. So this is the one where we do our blending technique. So I'm gonna put my lines in first and I'm gonna grab Azure and maybe mix a tiny, tiny, tiny bit of orchid in there just for a little pink tint, just the tiniest bit. And I'm going to follow where those curves are. So wherever there's a little bit of a crevice on my seashell, That's where I'm going to put in my lines. And you'll notice that the top part is thicker and then it thins out as I get more to the bottom. Also, you'll notice that I'm not making the lines go all the way down because with this seashell, the top part is bumpy and then as it works its way down, it actually evens out. I think you mean crevasse. Yes. <laughs> So I'm painting the crevasses. Thank you, Keenan, for that technical term. You're welcome. And I'll add another one here. Okay. So we're gonna let that one take a few seconds to dry. Now, as I blend this out, you'll see that there's soft undertones of pink. So I'm actually gonna grab and put a little bit of pink on my brush before I start blending. So I have a little bit of pink, and then I'm gonna start blending out. Now again, I'm kinda of only going to the edge of the line. I'm not working my way all the way down just yet. Make sure you curve the top of the shell too. That is a very satisfying color combo. Isn't it nice? Holy cow. It kind of looks like cotton candy. Yeah, it's just these little hints of like pink undertones that I think are really beautiful. So you can see that I'm not working the area a lot. I'm kind of just filling in the space, letting it run into the darker value and then moving on. If I were to take my paintbrush and do this, and just like sit there and rub this whole area for a long time, the values will start to even out. I'll lose my pink color. My lines will start to lose. You see the difference between this and this? Yes. So you just want to be a little bit softer with this and not overwork it if you want those pink tones to shine through. If you lose your pink tones, is there a way to put them back in? So the only way to put them back in is if you were to try and lighten this color. So I'm going to put paint, just water on this. Use my paper towel to lift up the extra paint, grab some pink, and put them back. 
Okay, now it won't be as light of a value as this. The pink won't be as vibrant as over here because there's blue underneath it. But that's okay, you can still put something back in. And then I'm gonna take that same pink and do this kind of V here at the bottom. And then I'm just gonna use water to kind of smooth this out where these meet. that. And if you need to go back in and redefine some of these crevices, you can. I'm going to wait a second before I do that on mine because this is still very wet and I don't want that blue bleeding everywhere. So I'm going to give it a second and I'm going to actually just do my little uh, feet here. Okay, now that while that dries for a second, we can go back to our first one. Now, um, you can totally pencil erase after you paint. You can't erase wherever water or paint has already touched a graphite line, graphite, graphite line, you can't erase that. But like I have some pencil marks around, those should be able to erase. Just make sure that your seashell is dry so you don't um, accidentally smear it. There we go, cleaned up a little bit more, okay. Now I'm just gonna add a little darker value on the left-hand side to kind of show a little bit more form because this is looking pretty two-dimensional, which means flat. So I'm gonna grab some pink, grab a little bit of orchid. You can use your six or your two, whatever's easier. And I'm just gonna go on the left-hand side. And if you go outside of the lines, I'm just gonna move the edge of my shell then. There we go. Maybe it would be easier with a smaller brush. And I'm okay with these texture lines, these thin lines. I'm not gonna blend these out. Cause one, I feel like it gives my seashell a little bit of texture, like that rough texture. I don't have a second reason. I said because one. <laughs> I don't have a two. <laughs> that second reason was my favorite one though. <laughs> Okay, keep going. Now you'll see that I'm getting some really rough textures here. That just, that's okay. Like the line isn't smooth. It's just because I don't have enough water on my brush. That's not bad or good. It just depends on the textures that you want on your seashell. So I don't mind that I have some rough there, but I'm gonna pick up a little bit more water on my next one. So I have, actually tend to like that look more. Yeah. I don't know why, but it looks super cool. It's just fun. It's almost like another one of those accidental things. Yeah. You didn't mean to not put water on your brush, but it happened. But it happened. And now you got this really cool rough texture. Is my head in the way of the close-up? No. If you're doing one? Okay. Shocking. Shockingly, yeah. Then a little bit down there. Now, if you wanted to smooth this out so it's not such a rough, like hard stop and start from the purple to the pink, you can. I can show you what that looks like if you're afraid to try it on your own. This is just taking a damp brush. Smoothing that out. So it's up to you. I'll do it a little down here too, so you can see. So just so you can see, here's like a smoother transition. If I took a damp brush and blended, this is if you were to leave it raw. You guys are the artists, so you guys get to choose what to do for yours. Okay, I'm gonna go back in and redo some of my crevices, crevasses. Just shape them a little bit more. Not a ton, just, just a little bit. 
for the ones that got really fuzzy. Now the reason why I'm doing it this way is because when you're trying to communicate the texture or the shape of something, value is everything. Value is how you communicate what sticks out and what goes back. Now, when you think of these crevices on a shell, you like if I were to run my hand over it, pretend I have a huge seashell in front of me, my hand would do this, right? Because there's crevices. So how to communicate crevices is you make it a darker value. And how you communicate that something is like coming up at you, like the bump, is you do a lighter value. So that is why we're doing a darker value for the crevices and a light wash for in between to communicate this bumpy shape. If we were to do it opposite, it would have the opposite feel where instead of this, you would do this. Does that make sense? Okay. And then the reason why this evens out is because there is no bumpiness on this. It's smooth. So at the top, it's bumpy. And then as you make your way down across, it's just a smooth uh, texture, smooth surface. 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 Surface, surface is Microsoft the surface. word. <laughs> I wanted to make a joke that uh, now you know that Microsoft Surface is one of our sponsors. <laughs> I wish. We just randomly throw in our sponsors Have a word. Laptop. Microsoft Surface. <laughs> you just keep painting. <laughs> yeah, I wish that was true. Do I? I don't know. I mean, if you've ever seen their Surface desktop, it's pretty magical. So I'm just kind of blending out the bottom a little bit. And then it's nice and smooth. Now my little feet bled into my V a little bit, but I'm not mad. I'm just going to go with that. Okay. Beautiful. Beautiful. Maybe I should have looked up the name of seashells. I only knew starfish. This is like a clam shape. Yeah. Right? Clam shape and... This is the horned... The horned shell. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what it's I've called. I have nothing else to add to that. <laughs> Kenan's like, I can't think quick enough to, to put anything in. It makes me think of a certain child's movie, but I can't remember the movie. Okay, you get back to me. Okay. Kind of reminds me of hermit crab yeah. shells. Yeah. Okay, now I'm just going to do dots to fill in the space in between because it's looking a little bare. Um, but you guys don't have to do that. Maybe you like the simplicity. Maybe you want to do leaves. Maybe you want to do tiny shells. Maybe you want to do a light blue wash of water. Sky's the limit. You can do whatever you want. So I'm just going to use these three colors as my dots here. You can do big ones. They don't have to be all the same size or the same value. Let's make that one. Okay. We're done. That's it. Good job. Um, I hope you guys had fun with this one. I know that this one is a little bit more loose and not as detailed as stuff that we usually do, but I figured going over the different watercolor techniques is a great way to get yourself more familiar with how you can utilize this medium and adapt it to whatever you want to personally paint. So I hope that you learned something. I can't wait to see what you came up with. If you're on Instagram, you could tag us at let's go make art or hashtag let's make art. Um, we have a wonderful Facebook community that's for the sole pur purpose of you guys being able to connect and share your work. And that is a private group, so you do have to ask to join, but we pretty much accept everybody. And um, that's called let's make art watercolor. 
So if you want to see how other people are approaching projects, if you want to see how other people are using these techniques that they're learning into their personal work, if you just want to connect with other people who are starting on something new, it's a great place. So you can go there. And if you need any of these supplies, they can be found at letsmakeart.com. Thanks so much for painting with me. That's it. Bye.